Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar where we'll be looking at uh, uh, some markets for the purposes of day trading. We call it day trading, uh, we call it day trading of futures for the US session and um, we will be looking at the indices but we'll also be looking at some forex as well and I think we've got some commodities um, uh, in, in the pipeline as well. If you've got, if you've got oil or gold up there or something yeah, I think David's got the oil chart up as well. Now, the reason we cover quite a broad section of the market is because of the methodology that uh, we'll be using in the webinar of volume price analysis can be applied to any market and any time frame. But before we start, as usual, can I please draw your attention to the disclaimer that I know you can see on your screen? As you know, trading can be a very risky business. So please, please don't ever think of uh, using money that you cannot afford to lose. That's really, really important. Um, <clears throat> Mention BPA, volume price analysis. Uh, all the details of, on the methodology can be found on Amazon. Uh, this is just one of the books on the methodology, this is the first book, if you like, that uh, uh, where I uh, first outlined uh, the approach that we use, that David, my husband and I have been using for almost uh, 20 years. Uh, to accompany this particular book, we now have um, a, work to, a book of worked examples because after the book came out, lots and lots of traders and investors really loved the book. It, I think it's got over 500 five-star reviews on, on Amazon, but they just wanted more examples to see how, how it had been applied in, as I said, in different markets and in different time frames. So there is actually this little, what we call a box set, but it is only available on Kindle. And as I said, there are 200 worked examples. On Amazon as well, you'll, you'll also find uh, specialist books on how you apply the methodology to Forex. There's a, one on binary options and uh, there's, um, there's all sorts of uh, uh, different bundles for the books. But essentially, everything is premised on the principles of volume price analysis. And what volume price analysis is, is reading a price chart, looking at the price action, looking at the volume, seeing whether the volume is supportive of the price action or not, because what VPA does, it authenticates what you are seeing on a chart. It really is as straightforward as that. Um, it also takes the principles of um, Richard Wyckoff, who've integrated some of, uh, some of his, um, his three laws into that. And VPA, one of the uh, basic tenets of VPA is support and resistance. And support and resistance actually is quite important today because a lot of, it's the end of the month, it's the last trading day of the month. There's all sorts of things going on at the moment um, in the markets, particularly as it's earning seasons as well. And when you're in this at this particular time of the trading cycle, as I said, it's the last day of the month. In Forex, for example, all sorts of things happen. Uh, sometimes there's heavy uh, dollar buying, sometimes there's heavy dollar selling. It's just one of these days where uh, traders and invest uh, traders and fund managers are sort of square off their book. Sometimes, uh, if it's the end of a quarter, they have to report back to their uh, to their investors. So you will see all sorts of um, movements that possibly you don't normally see on a normal working day. And as I said as well, we do have earnings season at the moment. Uh, Facebook reported yesterday. After the bell tonight, we have Amazon, we have Apple. Um, so it's, it's. I think somebody wrote that in this week, I think the top, um, the biggest companies, the five top companies, biggest companies in the S&P is the first time that they have, re they have reported within the same a time frame, as it were, of this week. So it's hugely, hugely important. And of course, against all this background, we have uh, the um, the ongoing issue with the pandemic. And I just want to say something about that with respect to uh, this pandemic, this plague, this pestilence that the, that we have been um, afflicted with, has been inflicted on us. And that is, you could ask, well. The economy is in a terrible state. 
it's fallen off a cliff. We could be, or maybe we are, in a, in a depression, something that we haven't seen since 1929, and we only have to look at today's unemployment uh, numbers. Um, unemployment came from the US, where we have another almost 4 million people uh, claiming unemployment, and they don't even know if that is an accurate figure because there may be people there who are not claiming or people who uh, aren't, are simply not being counted. And, you know, we have the NFP next Friday. So you have all this terrible, terrible economic data, this huge number of people of unemployed. Well, why? Why is the market going up? Why have we had a, a, a looks like to be either a V-shaped reversal on the indices or the mother and father of all squeezes? But however you look at it, from a trading perspective, the market is is back in uh, an uptrend. I mean, it's gone down slightly today, and it's being it's very volatile. If you were with us last week, we were watching the market, and uh, you know it was going up nicely, and suddenly again it sort of fell off a cliff, and that was on rumour and speculation that the um, the trial for the Gilead uh, drug Remdesivir. As a, as a, not as a cure for um, uh, uh, the coronavirus, but to help treat it. Uh, there were reports that it wasn't as effective. The trial was a failure. I think it came out of China. The market absolutely swooned. A couple of days ago, um, Gilead announced that in fact, uh, another trial, it wasn't as negative as that. It was actually quite positive. So you have that driving the market. You have terrible economic uh, data coming out and, you know, and yet the market seems to be going up. We do have this intraday volatility, res responding to earnings, responding to uh, you know what is happening on the uh, with the medical situation. But essentially, the market is looking positive. And you think, well, why on earth you know should that be? And one reason, whether you buy this reason or not, it's uh, it's you know I'm I'm not uh, I'm not saying it's it's it is the right reason or a wrong reason. And this is from Goldman's, you know whatever you think about Goldman's, and that is because the market is looking ahead. It's looking ahead maybe two years, and it's almost as if all this bad news has already been priced into uh, the fall that we have already had. Now, as a trader, in a sense. We don't really care whether the market's going up or down because you're looking to make some profit from the movement, whether that's going up or whether that's that's um, going down. But what you have to be aware of as a trader on an intraday basis that, you know, or you have all this negative news around you, as I said, terrible economic data, terrible, so many people, you know, now obviously without a job. And you mustn't allow that to influence what you may or may not see on the chart. So you have to kind of insulate yourself from, if you like, the general, you know, this this uh, this chatter that is going on around you. It is very, very difficult. If you're an investor, it's a totally different ball game. But I don't really want to go into the investing side of things at the moment because, as I said, this is purely from a trading perspective. So. So as I said, there's all this all going on. You have to be aware that you will get unexpected bouts of volatility. Uh, as I said, as we saw last week from uh, news that um, sometimes good news, sometimes bad news. There seems to be more good news in the sense this uh, this development for a potential vaccine. But even there, you've got Pfizer saying that um, it is potentially for September. You've got um, Smith, was it Glaxo's Smith? GSK, GlaxoSmithKline yeah. saying, no, that's not until the middle of next year that uh, possibly some kind of vaccine may be, may be forthcoming, or there may not be a vaccine. We, we're in, we have some trials going on here in the UK from a, a, a group called the Oxford uh, um, Trial, the Jenner Institute. People were injected last week. The, the news will be released, I think, um, the results will be released in June. And against all this, we have a chart to have a look at. And what we are trying to do is make sense of that chart. But using VPA, at least it will give you a head start. And what I've done, because the first thing we have to try and establish, going back to support uh, and resistance, is look at levels. Levels 
It's what every trader out there is looking at. There are key levels. What are the important levels? Is the price going to bounce off that level? Is it going to go through that level? And it doesn't matter. I'm looking at the YM at the moment. I've got the pound Aussie chart, which has been a fantastic uh, a, a, a trade today. Um, in fact, since this morning, which is quite unusual. Usually in Forex, you have a great move in the morning in a pair, then you have a pause, and then when you have New York coming on board, the, the, you know, the move can kind of fizzle out a bit or, you know, those traders in New York, they're not interested in what's been happening in London. So they'll go off and, and search for, for something else. So but unusually, it's been a fantastic trade all through uh, the day from uh, London from the eight o'clock start this morning. Levels. So as a trader, what do we have to, what we look at? We look at levels, what has the price been doing? And this is just an example. This is from the YM. This is actually a three minute chart. Now, traders mark important levels on their charts in many different ways. You can use Fibonacci, you can use a, a moving average, the 200 moving average is, a, is an iconic level, if you like, although I'm always a little bit puzzled when they say the 200, is that a simple moving average, is it an exponential, is it a fractal? Anyway, that's another story. Um, we use support and resistance. We use price-based support and resistance. We use volume-based support and resistance. And we have a, a specific indicator based on the Camarilla protocol, where we have six levels that we apply to a chart and we look at it. And when an instrument, when a market is particularly at the uh, fourth level, which is it is here for the YM, which is the S4, or the, uh, uh, the resistance, which is R4, we pay very particular attention to this level because a breakthrough is often considered a, a potential, you know, break, a good breakaway from that level. What has happened here, we had some nice selling under this candle here. Away, as soon as I saw it on the S4, it was actually a retest of the open, as we can see at half past two. In fact, the, at the open, the price was coming down. Then we had the open. There was a lot of volume going in at the open. There was an attempt to rise. It did eventually rise off the S4, as we can see here, but really didn't get much beyond the S5 and really has been moving in a sort of sideways and in quite a narrow range. So it's not an easy um, um, a trading environment at the moment, certainly for the YM, and I think it's replicated on the on the NQ and the uh, S&P. But what's interesting is this is this is obviously now a key level. It's bounced off this level at the open. There's an attempt, right? It's come back to test it. It's broken through. But what often happens with key levels is there's a lot of sort of uh, going backwards and forwards, retesting, falling again, and before the move, then uh, uh, gathers some kind of momentum but this is this here is really a very tricky if you like from an intraday perspective it's basically going sideways and what we have to wait do in a situation like this we simply have to wait but at least I have these key levels marked on my chart from a, a, a volume perspective we can see here with a really nice example of VPA we've got a, a, a down candle with a lot of volume you think oh great then we had an effort to rise we have three candles going up we have falling volume what is that telling you well it's not going to go very far and what does it do it goes smack bang into as I said this is my key level so I know already this and I on this chart that's all I keep I keep a Camarilla level I keep uh, the volume and I have my candles and that's it. If we look at it from the perspective of the um, of the pound Aussie, again, this, as I said, this has been the, the move in the pound Aussie. This has really absolutely taken off. It took, went way beyond the R4. We have six levels that we have uh, developed for this indicator and it's gone through here as well. With this indicator as well, up to up to but not including the hourly chart these are the levels that the indicator delivers if you move up to the hourly chart and i show you as well on the ym i put 60 minutes on there the values are different but these values stay here until the end of the week so not only do you have uh, a key level for 
a daily basis, an intraday basis, you also have, you can compare that to when the price is reaching a level which is significant for the week. So if we go back to the YM, what we have here is we can see here, it's now falling, it's now moving, so it looks as though that's that's picking up some nice steam, nice momentum. This is where I'd go to my, perhaps my Renko chart and my time chart and look at my other indicators and see whether that is potentially a, 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 a setup for a, a, a trade to the short side. But if I just flick that up and just bring that the hourly one and see how that sits. And we can see here, this is what I'm saying about resistance and support because obviously the YM has been in an uptrend. This is what this has been reflecting. It's gone through, it hasn't been able to, it's, it went through the R4, looked as though it was going to break higher, didn't quite get to the R5, reverse, and now it's moving lower. And what I'm looking for on these two time frames to do with levels is whether the price action I'm looking at at the moment is it going to approach a key level on a, on a higher time frame, on a slower time frame, and you get that confluence, and that means that that is then going to be a very, very strong level, and to get through, it is going to need an awful lot of volume. Now, you see it, a slight decrease in volume, but you would expect that, because this vol is the surge that we get at the open. David, shall I pass over to you on that one? Is that okay? Have you got the YM up there anyway? Brilliant. Okay, so as I said, I just moved back to the three minute. Let's see whether that's. Oh, to get back on it, what I'm looking at is I've actually got the R3, which is not a. It's just another level. It doesn't have a strong as, as significance as the R4. The next sort of really key level is the R1, and that this area between the R1 and the S1 is we kind of call a, a buffer zone. Sometimes it, it will go into consolidation, and you really have to wait for a, a you know um, some kind of a, a catalyst to move it in one direction or another. But at least the R3 will tell you on the hour that is it is. If, if anything, it will at least pause at that level. Let's just go to three minute. And when David moves back over to myself, I will also show you what I've done with regards to the Forex uh, on the MT5 and how I've taken this and applied it to the Forex pairs. But I'll move back over to David and we'll see uh, what he's got on his charts. <laughs> 